Welcome to the GPFF Lives Online Conversation. Uh, please join myself uh, and Nina Strike, the Executive Director of the Global Peace Film Festival, as we are in conversation with the filmmakers Jeff Kaufman and Marsha Ross regarding their current project, Nazreen. And please remember to check in with uh, our festival website. Uh, our dates are September 20th through the 26th, and we look forward to seeing you there. And now let's uh, say hello to Jeff and Marsha. Hi, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, you for having us today. Great, great to see you our guys. Pleasure. And let's start by, first of all, we met um, through, your, through a previous film, Every Act of Life, which, um, we hope lots of people watching will will check in on uh, will watch. Um, but you have a new project with Nazreen, which we'd like you to tell us about and tell our audience about. Well, um, to start, it's interesting. The, the movie that you're mentioning, Every Act of Life, was about the playwright Terence McNally, who was also uh, a powerful social activist and LGBTQ activist. And Terence really believed that the arts could help push society forward. Uh, Nazreen Sotade is a women's rights activist, human rights activist in Iran, um, but she also has that strong belief. It's a real connection between the two of them. Uh, she gets a lot of strength and energy from the power of the arts in Iran and around the world. Um, and uh, um, so there's a connection between both of them, uh, people at the center of a community um, who change countless lives. Correct, yeah. So Nazarene is uh, an internationally known human rights activist and particularly uh, defender of free speech. And we started making the film, I guess about five, six years ago with her. Um, the film, a lot of the film were shot secretly in Iran and, and uh, it was a complicated way. We'd never made a film like this before where we really couldn't go to the country. We, we interviewed a lot of people, but in this case, we really couldn't go there. It would be too dangerous for us. We would have gotten arrested um, uh, being on the ground. But we also found that it actually made a lot more sense because we were able to get a lot more intimate coverage of her life and her work by us not being there and having these people you know, follow her and really capture her life and her work process and her family life. So we were looking to really create a, a very well-balanced portrait of this, this woman who was, uh, you know, defending all kinds of different people in different situations for the for human rights issues? And yeah, let me just jump in yeah, for one yeah. second and say that you know we reached out to Nazarene because we respected her so much and because she represents so many things for the whole world, not just for Iran and especially for America. If you think about America over the course of this film, here's a woman fighting for religious minorities, fighting for freedom of the press, fighting for women's rights. Uh, reaching out beyond her own life for others. What a powerful message for America, especially as we see this demonization of Iran and the separation of the, of the two. We really wanted to have a, a humane new idea of what it's like to be an Iranian person. Um, but then also remarkably um, real life events took place that brought the film from just a tribute to Nazarene to really uh, a historic portrait because she became the center of this movement uh, where women would take off their hijabs uh, on the streets of Tehran and all around uh, Iran, put them on a stick, young, old, holding a baby uh, with their boyfriend or husband, put it on a stick and wave it. Uh, and just for that act of taking off your headscarf uh, and protesting Iran's mandatory uh, hijab laws, these women could go to prison for 10 years. And Nazarene became the lead lawyer and spokesperson for that movement and then ended up becoming arrested for her work on their behalf. Right, so why we were making the film in 2018, I mean, you know, she just disappeared one day. And now in on, uh, in, on June 13th, it'll be the third anniversary of her being in prison in Iran for this work. I mean, she was given, how many, what, a 30? Uh, a sentence of 38 years in prison and 148 lashes. For, the, for this work defending these women. Wow. Um, the I remember from, from watching the film, that footage of the women waving their hijabs was, was so touching um, and the bravery of all of them. Um, um, how did you get to, you know, how did you find this story? How did you get to know Nazri? So Jeff had made a number of films for Amnesty International, you know, actually about Iran. And one of the films that he made 
was a short film called Education Under Fire about the persecution of the Baha'i faith in Iran. And as you know, they can't get educated. I mean, they're intensely persecuted by the government for their religious beliefs. And Nazreen is an attorney who, who was defending people of the Baha'i faith. And I think at the time, Jeff was really taken with this idea you know, of, of this Muslim woman and other Muslim people helping their, their, their Baha'i neighbors. And, and her, her work and you know, her bravery really stuck with him. And when we were thinking about what we wanted to do after uh, every act of life, our, the Terrence McNally film you mentioned, you know, we went back and revisited this and thought, well, maybe we should make a broader film about really this woman and her life and her work. I mean, actually, because in a way, I mean, and you know, she's very much in, in, in a way to us, like sort of like a Ruth Bader Ginsburg sort of, you know, character. I mean, her, you know, the work that she's done and the impact that she's had on the lives of so many people is, is so profound. I just have to say, um, if, I, if I could add on to that, I mean, Marsha, uh, we've gotten to know Nazreen and her husband as friends, even though we're far away, talking so often. And it's an intense experience having someone who's, um, a, you know, a, sort of a global icon getting that personal connection as well. And it makes it all the more moving when you realize, you know, on a personal level, this is a deeply good person. You know, just, just to add to what Jeff is saying also for us in terms of making the film. I mean, you know, Iran is, is a beautiful country. It's a physically a very beautiful country. And um, most of the time, and I think you probably see this with a lot of the films, you know, that you show at the festival as well, that when we hear about a country like Iran in this country, we just read about it in the news. Obviously, we're aware of the, the nuclear deal, if you read the news right now, or the things that, you know, the Ayatollah, the things that go on in Iran, we hear about them, but we hear about them, you know, through the lens of our government to government. And you know, we're very detached really from the people. And I think something that's been very important to Jeff and me, and it comes up in all of our films, is really sort of, cap it is capturing the common humanity that we share with people in other countries, that, it, that we're really all just people who, you know, want the same things, you know, with family lives and children and, in, and all kind, you know, and work and things that we're passionate about, and and I think also in meeting a lot of people that are exiles from Iran who had to leave Iran because of their politics or they were educators, scientists, teachers, lawyers, you know, people just couldn't live there anymore. You know, it was very moving to us because there's a country there that those people really love that they can never go back to, that we wanted to sort of recognize in the making making of the film. One of the I, I think that was really captured beautifully in um, one scene in particular when, when Nasreen was, was going to find gifts. Mm. There was, it was just so, you know, it was, as you said, this, this, this thing that almost everyone can relate to, right? A, a very human, very intimate moment. Um, and then, you know, looking at the, seeing that in that little shop, there was everything from, um, uh, you know, Muslim gifts to, um, Christian gifts for mm -hmm. Santa Claus and Christmas, you know? Yeah. So it really did make it feel, uh, I mean, when Nazreen says, you know, speaks about, you know, uh, the, the, multi, the, the multitude of cultures within Iran and how much she respects and feels that that's what makes the, you know, her country so beautiful. We finally get to see that rather than, you know, than having this monolith of, as you said, these kind of political representations, which are very binary for the reason of getting us to oppose one another. And, and another thing I found so um, moving in the film is just how much you see the humanity of the people of Iran, which we don't, you know, which again, exactly as you say, we're, we're used to the binary, you know, we hear about the binary, we don't hear, everybody I know who's, who's visited Iran at any time talks about how absolutely warm and welcoming the Iranian people are. And that comes through in the film. Good. So um, tell us some more about the issues of, of producing a film from across the world and what that was. And Jeff, I remember you and I talked at one point when you were uh, working to be able to um, get some footage of, of, of Nazreen from prison on the phone. Yeah, uh, well, we did this entire film in secret. So we 
um, had full co cooperation from Nazarene and this really remarkable group of activists in Iran. Everyone you see in the film signed a full, you know, legal release. They knew exactly what they were doing, uh, but um, you know, they put themselves at considerable risk to do it, uh, as did the anonymous but uh, talented and courageous uh, filmmakers who were there uh, at Nazarene's side. Uh, but part of doing it in secret also means that, you know, you can't raise money publicly, you can't do any of the normal things you do trying to create a film, but we wanted to protect Nazarene as much as possible, and the others in the film. And I will say, even, you know, throughout the, the process, when Nazarene was still, uh, prior to her arrest, we'd often say, Nazarene, you know, we love what we're getting, we love what we're doing, we'll stop at any time if you think this puts you at risk. And she would always say, no, 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 I, I know the risk more than anybody, and it's important to continue. After her arrest, and for briefly, for a couple of months, her husband was imprisoned as well, uh, we would say the same thing to them. Um, and when, even when we finished editing the film, we'd said, we'll, we'll, we'll put this in a box and show it to no one if you don't want it to come out. But they always felt that this was the best way to get her story out and, uh, and to connect that you know, universal uh, um, 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 storytelling around the world. And we've been very pleased that the film has become a, a powerful way to amplify her voice, especially when the government wants to shut down her voice as much as possible. I mean, one of the other challenges we faced, obviously, was making making a film in a language that we don't speak. <laughs> I mean, I've learned a little Farsi, but not very much. And so everything was coming to us in Farsi. And, and we had to have it, you know, tra uh, translated for us in order to kind of, you know, build, build a story and build a script as Jeff does when he makes a film. So um, it was interesting because we also got the film in different batches. So we, we never knew what was coming. So we get a tape. Well, we knew it was coming, but we never we knew it would come. Yeah, we didn't know when it would come, but yeah. we also didn't know what was on it a lot of times, you know, because part of a story would be on there or part of something she was doing would be on one, but then later on, the rest of it would be somewhere else. So it, ca it came in different times and unexpectedly, and we'd find all kinds of things on there. And Jeff would, you know, he would first transcode it before we'd send it off to the... Uh, to you know to our translators uh, and you know you sort of it's kind of a little bit be imagining what are they talking about you know what's happening here and then of course then we'd get it back and then we kind of have to work with it that way and then finally i think you know in the editing process because well one thing about farsi is that it's a very beautiful language and one thing can mean many things and so the really tricky thing for us as we finally edited the film and subtitled the farsi for english was really making sure that we captured not just you know what was being said, but the, the right way, the right expression of what was being said, the intention of what was being said. So you know we worked with several wonderful translators, and our editor worked directly with uh, one of our translators too to sort of really make sure that it matched and that what we were saying was really what was intended that and that was felt. Yeah. And just to amplify one little thing that Marsha was saying in, in that strange gap, um, we'd often communicate. Um, some things that we would love in the film if possible. I mean, it's real life, so you have to go where life takes you. Uh, but I'd obviously had hoped that Jafar Panahi, who's one of the world's greatest filmmakers, but also a close colleague as an activist with Nazreen, they both won the Sakharov Prize for the European Union, and Nazreen was in his wonderful movie Taxi. Uh, we hoped that he would be in our film, and I would keep, you know, nudging Nazreen about that. And, and she said, oh, at one point she said, oh, we just we have something with, with Panahi, I hope you'll be pleased. And then of course she got arrested um, and um, people were lo looking for it and it was gone for maybe like seven, eight months. Um, and finally, and then Reza was arrested as well. Finally, when he got out, that drive was found with that footage in it. Uh, and it was great. I mean, Panahi is a remarkable person and he has some of the most amazing lines like where he goes, now Miss Sotade, I know that you always do this for free, but you can't represent me legally for free, you know? And uh, uh, anyway, uh, but all that um, had a backstory of, of drama waiting for it to come, wondering if it disappeared and then finally get it and realizing, oh my goodness, look at this. Well, and when you both talked about your um, your need to protect Nazarene, mm -hmm. uh, that extends to this very day, right? That you yeah. are involved with uh, um, amplifying her message, even though she is still in prison. Correct? Yes. I mean, you know, what as as Jeff was saying earlier. I mean, when we 
you never know what's going to happen when you make a film. I mean, but we certainly didn't expect that she would be arrested. But, you know, once she became arrested and then we finished the film, it really, the, the, you know, we knew the direction we wanted to take with the impact for the film. That became very, very important and still continues. I mean, as we advocate for her release from prison, um, that's something, you know, that's on our minds all the time and something that's been part of our global um, in, impact and outreach campaign. And now we've added, obviously, Lujain, as you've seen, to that as well. I mean, she's a, a Saudi Arabian activist. Yes. Uh, thank you, Nina, for putting those up, those hashtags. So these are, this is part of your social media. Uh, and, and you had mentioned, I think just earlier, that, um, that even though our countries are so far apart, that the social media uh, does allow her message to get heard. And, and what we may be saying here today may actually get through to people in Iran, correct? Yeah, I think that's an important um, realization for many human rights activists around the world. When we first started talking to Nazreen about doing this film, she always wanted it to be a gateway to paying tribute to others like her. And that was one of our goals too, but not just people in Iran, but really um, she represents so many amazing people around the world who may not have her visibility, but certainly have her courage and her vision. Um, and one of the things we've learned, and <clears throat> she said this to us directly, uh, and Reza, her husband, I said this as well, that in prison, she hears about the actions of film festivals and awards like yours and, and what the film is doing and, and how we reach out on her behalf. Um, and sometimes she she's told us, sometimes she lies in bed at night on a particularly grim day in Garchak prison, one of the worst prisons in the world. And what gives her strength the next day is knowing that there are people out there working on her behalf, this film, the community of people who care. Um, and as Marsha was saying, through the Free Nazarene and Free Lujain campaign, which is really linking women all over the world, um, it, it is magnifying and amplifying that campaign. But again, um, if you're supporting someone um, in this kind of struggle, it's not just an abstract thing where it's you in your room and who knows where it goes. Um, it, it has a direct impact, both with the politicians in those countries who do feel the power of, uh, of, of uh, social concern and pressure and shame. Um, and it works its way into the prison and into the heart of the person you're advocating on behalf of. Yeah, I think the, you know, the hardest thing for many political prisoners is this feeling that they're forgotten. And, you know, then you give up hope because, you know, no one cares or thinks about you anymore. So it's imperative to, to keep making noise about this. And as Jeff is saying too, that the governments do respond. I mean, the, you know, the pressure, the international pressure that's been put on the Iranian government by having her name spoken by so many countries around the world. I mean, this is, we were delayed unfortunately this morning because she just won a freedom of speech award from an organization in Spain and she continues to get these acknowledgements and, and you know, the German judges speak out and the International Bar Association issues statements and the American Bar Association we did a program with. So all of this really adds up and it, and it does put pressure on the government and, and it becomes, even though she's in a horrible place, you know, a somewhat of a safety blanket. It, it's not as, you know, she can't be, they can't bury her. Yeah. So so, sil silence and isolation are those main tools then yes. for, for those oppressors. Yes. So since the Global Peace Film Festival is at heart an organization committed to positive change and to more peaceful, just world, and also to engaging audiences and, and inviting them to do something. Tell us what, uh, tell our audience what they can do personally, how they can be involved, how they can help. Well, first of all, I wanna thank your audience you know, for participating and being here with us and having these shared values. Uh, one of the things they can do, and this is what Reza and Nazreen urged urge too, is go to the website, www.nazreenfilm.com. Uh, www.nazarenefilm.com. Uh, both the, there's ways to see the film, um, and uh, there are also ways to get active on behalf of Nazarene. Uh, they're linked to many social uh, partners like, uh, you know, Ms. Magazine and Amnesty International and Pan America, uh, who are doing 
vital work. Uh, and uh, there's also a social media toolkit so that you can get involved and get your voice out there. And there's petitions to sign as well. So there's a lot of different ways that you can participate and sign up for the newsletter so we can stay in touch uh, over time. And there's also on our website, um, you know, if, if people are interested in having screenings for their organizations and showing the film because they are interested in the subject matter or support the subject matter. You know, there, there are ways to get in touch with us. There's a whole sign up thing if, if you wish to bring a screening to your organization. And, and the film's now available all around the world, by the way. So if you have international viewers, um, thank you for watching. And, and for those who haven't seen the film, for those who have seen the film, thank you so much. And for those who haven't, there's so many ways. And the website will take you to links all over the world. I mean, it's being shown in television, it's being licensed for television around the world. It's available now on Amazon and iTunes. It's coming to Hulu here in this country um, very soon. So a lot of good things happening. Can I just um, connect people for a moment to where Nazarene is right now? Is that okay? Um, yeah. First of all, I just want you to know that uh, Nazarene has had some severe medical conditions. So she did have a couple of short medical leaves over the last few months. And, and it was amazing for Marcia and me to talk to her and see her again after you know all these years. And I wish you could be there with us because, you know, having suffered so much, you connect to Nazreen and the first thing she does is ask how you're doing and how are your children. Um, she's got that wonderful smile and that big laugh. And no matter how grim things are, we always find things to joke about and to bond about, you know, and then we get down to the serious business. But that's the kind of spirit of this woman. It's just contagious um, and it's very moving and touching. Um, but, you know, she was sent to the prison back in 2018. And um, as COVID hit uh, the world and hit Iran particularly hard, she became uh, an advocate for improving health conditions in Iranian prisons because they're horrible. And uh, she went on a couple of hunger strikes, one that released, that got a couple of elderly prisoners out of Iran prisons. Um, and then the second one, which lasted like 46 days, uh, was really calling for all political prisoners to be released from Iranian prisons because of the horrendous health conditions. Um, she really, you know, it's, you're talking about silence. She found a way in her prison cell to call the attention of the world to what was going on in Iran. It was remarkable. Uh, finally, her heart condition got so bad that she stopped the hunger strike, uh, but that didn't stop her voice. Um, and soon after stopping her hunger strike, the Iranian authorities said to her, um, we're going to send you to the hospital for treatment. And they put her in a car and they drove her out of the gates. And rather than drive her to a hospital, they drove her 90 miles out of Tehran to an even worse prison called Garchak prison. And if you look it up, you'll see that it, 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 it smells of sewage. It's an old chicken processing plant. It's a disgusting place with dripping water. Um, and she is in a, in a windowless cell with, with uh, something like uh, 14 other beds in a 10 by 10 room. So like two weeks after she got there, she got COVID. Um, and so she's suffered from a heart condition. She's suffered from COVID. She's, she's back in guard check now after some treatment, uh, but her, her spirit doesn't diminish. Uh, and we have a direct ability to keep her spirit up and her strength going um, the more we get involved. That's, uh, uh, that's really, you know, I'm, I'm glad she has people like you, you know, in, still in communication with her so that it's hard news to hear, but um, I think it's important that we know what, you know, what the conditions are that she's suffering. So thank you for sharing that. And, and what can, as, as we close the conversation, what can our, uh, you know, our community do to, to support your work in general? What, what can, you know, what can we do to, you know, we always love to support our alumni filmmakers. We always consider you're not just to be filmmakers, but become part of our, our GPFF family. So what can we do to support you? Me? Um, we're partners, so we can speak for each other. Uh, well, Honestly, I think the best thing you can do is, is, is show your support for Nazarene and other political prisoners and human rights activists like her, um, men and women uh, doing remarkable work. If you go to, again to our website, nazarenefilm.com, you'll see lots of links uh, of ways to do that. Um, 
And I know, you know, it can seem abstract, you know, that you hear these names, you read them in the paper, uh, but these are real people uh, really, really in need. And even if you don't see the link, if you get involved, there will be a direct link between you and that person and making a difference. And in these difficult times, making a difference is the best thing, so. Can I just add one thing to that, which has been just sort of interesting also for us, which is that, um, when people have seen the film, I mean, you know, particularly people who know nothing about Nazarene, it's had such a big impact on them. You know, it, it's been, it, because I think people are so unaware as, as we totally understand that people are living in these sort of situations. It's an awakening for a lot of people, what it's like. And so, you know, I, you know, we, and it's one of the reasons, you know, we're having this global, you know, impact and outreach campaign to bring the film to all kinds of audiences, you know, because we bring it to, you know, there's a lot of human rights groups that are very interested in, in the subject matter, but a lot of people are interested in the subject matter because they don't, they don't know about it. And I think it's, you know, it's, it's really important. And I think it's, it's also important for us here in this country you know, which we felt a lot making the film to recognize, you know, the, the precariousness of free speech and what can happen to people. And, and when you see what goes on in another country, you have to think about what's going on in your own country and the attempts that we see right now to have our rights taken from us and how easily they could be gone and how much we depend on our, our legal system and our courts in many ways to, you know, keep us from going over the edge, but just barely, and that could go at any time. And that's kind of what's happened in Iran and, and, and it's a constant, and it's a reminder. And I, I really think this should, for me, I think it's important never to forget, you know, the precariousness of, of our democratic rights. I think that's well said. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Jeff and Marsha so much for your commitment and for your, your tremendous work. Um, as, as Jeff and Marsha had said, please check out uh, nazrenefilm.com. Um, also, please consider supporting the campaign by using the hashtag free Nazarene and free Lujane. And please consider joining us in September when we uh, have our festival, uh, September 20th through the 26th, and go to peacefilmfest.org to follow us and get more information Again, thank you so much uh, for listening. Thank you. Thank you. It's been Thanks a real pleasure. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for the support. This is great. Our pleasure.